what I want to talk to you guys about is I'm not going to give you like my life story, right? We can go to the bar and we can talk about that later, all right? But what I want to share with you guys is what it took for me to get to where I am. Because I can look at each and every one of you and tell you that I am the happiest that I have ever been at 38 years old. Now, at 19, I was really happy then too, right? I was invincible, all right? I was invincible. Nothing bothered me. The concept of change was, I didn't worry about it at all. But the older I get, the more it's like, ooh, change. Okay, I'm fairly comfortable where I am now. Why would I want things to change, right? And, this, and it's that, that, that quote that you always come back to, the only thing that's constant in life is change, you know? And you're like, God, that's so cliche, but it's so true. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you guys the, the, the quick cliff notes of how I got to be talking to you. And then when you guys are getting ready to leave out of here, hopefully you'll have learned something from me and gotten some stuff from me that will help you in your futures. Because before I say anything else, the most important thing for me is that you guys are the future. I have a four-year-old son. You guys are the ones who are going to be in charge when my kid is growing up. And I want people in a position to be good, to be knowledgeable, to not fear things. So when they asked me to talk to you, I came up with this idea, I'm gonna talk about change. But you cannot talk about change unless you talk about two other things. And one of them is overcoming adversity, and the other one is fear. So, let's roll back summer 2006. Hippie Jeff, long hair, beard, right? I took showers, kind of, right? <laughs> I was a rock climber, right? I was doing all kinds of stuff. But I was also in arguably the worst point in my life. I woke up one morning after a night of extensive partying and I looked at myself in the mirror and I stopped and I looked at myself and I said, if you don't change something in your life, you are either going to be dead or you are gonna end up in jail. And I am not a religious person, right? But later on in that day, something happened to me, which was, I, would, I just wanna call it spiritual. I got a phone call from Poland, okay? I'm sitting at a bar again, right? Big, big life-changing experience, looking in the mirror. 45 minutes later, my ass was back at the bar, sitting in the same seat, drinking the same drinks right? I was watching the World Cup, actually, right? Americans at a bar watching soccer, right? I was like, what the hell, you know? And then I got a phone call, and it was my buddy Brian. Now, I am best friends with Brian's brother, Chris. We've been friends since we were in, in junior high school. And he called me up and said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm drinking at a bar. My life is going nowhere, and uh, I guess I'm pretty happy with this. And he said, no, you're not. He said, no, you're not. He's like, I know you, Jeff. I've known you all your life. He's like, here, how about this? I got a free place for you to stay. Why don't you come here and see what happens? Now, remember, in the morning, I looked at myself and said, dude, if you don't change something, something bad's going to happen. And then this phone call comes. It's like, all right. Now, what did I know about Poland? I grew up in New York. So my town is half Italians, right? And then a nice, easy mix of Poles, Czechs, Russians, and a little mix of everything else, all right? So what did I know about Poland? I knew that gwomki was incredible, right? I knew that pierogies were good and they were cheap because I lived on them in college, right? And I knew how to say kielbasa. Other than that, I didn't know that much. Now, geographically, I am not one of the Americans that didn't know where Poland was. I, I knew where it was on the map. I knew what Warsaw was, and I understood the history of things, and I figured, you know, what the hell? Now, as luck would have it, my girlfriend had dumped me a couple months before, and I was living with a guy who worked for Delta Airlines. So he hooked me up with a buddy pass. So I show up, and I get my buddy pass, and I get on the airplane, and they're like, oh, you have a buddy pass? I was like, yes, I do. They're like, well, you don't sit there. You come sit in first class, right? I have never done anything first class in my life. Okay, but here they're like, you come up and you sit, first class. So I was like, all right, this is, a, this, is a, this is a good start, right? This is a good start. 
Now, he, he called me, and it was 10 days. 10 days in between the time I, I made a decision that I was going to go and the time that I left. I left everything. Everything. I still don't even know where all of my stuff is. Right? I, I know I left it at my friend Steve's house, but I found out a couple years ago that his wife had passed away. So I don't even know if the house is there. I don't know where any of my stuff is. I just left everything. Right? I'd sold my brother's truck right, for about $2,000, and that's what I came to Europe with. $2,000 and two backpacks. That was it. But I did get to fly first class. That was pretty nice. So I landed, you know, landed in Germany, because that's as close as I could get, right? They didn't fly any closer. So I landed in Germany. It was like, all right, American in Europe. Here we go. New life, new start. How do Europeans travel? All right, let's take a train, right? Europeans love trains. Let's take trains. So I go and I get to the lady and I'm like, hello, ma'am. I'm like, I need to go to Glowais, Poland. She looked at me, she said, what? I'm like, Glowais, G-L-I-W-I-C-E, Glowais. She's like, oh. I'm like, and I'm looking, what, 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 what'd I do? She's like, no, it's, it's Glowice. I was like, oh shit, here we go. You know, <laughs> like, here we go. I had literally been in Europe for less than five minutes and I was already making mistakes, okay? So sure enough, you know, she figures it out. I, I get on this train, right? And I sit down. It's one of those nice German trains, right? The ones that go from zero to Mach 7 in like eight seconds, you know? You go, know, and we're gone, okay? So I'm sitting down and I'm watching this little ticker, 234 kilometers an hour, trying to do the math in my head going, oh my God, I, can't, I don't even know how fast we're going, right? Because we don't have kilometers per hour. It's miles per hour, you know? And it's like, oh, geez. All right, here, where do we go? So we get to the Polish border. I get off the super fast German train. I walk underneath this tunnel that is just, it's scary. It is like every communist movie you've ever seen. Like there's spray paint on the walls, right? And there's people just like standing in the corner like. Because this is back when you could smoke anywhere, right? That was Europe, right? So I go and I get onto this Polish train, Right? And I'm looking around, I'm like, okay, I don't know where I'm going. And I sit down, and all of a sudden, the train starts going. <laughs> and we start moving. And I'm like, is, is it broken? Because it was not, like, I'm like, I could, there were, there were literally like little kids going like, hey, you know, like running faster than we were. And so I was like, okay. And I also had, I was also in one of those trains where like, you know, it was, it was, it was the end of August, so it was really hot. And if any of you know, like the old Polish trains, I went to pull down the window and the window went down and then as the train was going, it was going, right? And slowly bouncing back up. So in first class in Delta, they gave me this little bag. And in this little bag was a pair of like disposable socks. All right, I don't know who loses their socks in first class, but hey, right? So I tied it down and I tied it down and the window's open and I'm going through and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be all right, all right? Now, I had read on the internet, never fall asleep in a Polish train. <laughs> you fall asleep, you're going to lose your bags and a kidney. I was like, like oh, jeez, all right, here we go. So um, I'm trying my best not to fall asleep. Now, I had partied the night before I got on the airplane. I didn't sleep. Uh, so I, by that point, I was pretty tired. So I'm sitting there, and, you know, uh, and all of a sudden, the door slams open, and this woman's like, Bilet Prosha! <laughs> right? Now, bilet, I didn't know what bilet was. Well, I thought she was saying, like, bullet, you know? So I kind of, like, ducked down, like, what, what, what's going on, you know? Like, I just scared the living shit out of me, right? I was sleeping, so, right? I was like, okay. Um, she's like, American. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Ticket. I'm like, oh, okay. You were supposed to be in second class. This is first class. I'm like, hey, come on. They, they, they upgraded me on the airplane. Like, what can't just... Upgrade me here, right? <laughs> and I was in first class, and I'm thinking, this is first class, huh? <laughs> right? You know? So anyway, I finally, eventually the woman was cool, and she got me through. And then something very strange happened. Automatically, I had to rely on the help of strangers. I had to. There was this dude. I don't know who he was. I, I, I don't remember. He had, had dreadlocks, right? I had a carton of American cigarettes. And this guy, I'm like, dude, I don't know where I'm going, all right? I don't know where I'm going. I started off in like, I was in like Gurlitz, and I had to go to Wrocław, and I had to change trains, and then I had to go down. 
And this guy's like, man, don't worry. Don't worry, I'll help you, right? I gave him a pack of smokes and he's like, don't worry, I'll make sure you get off where you're supposed to, to get off. And sure enough, this guy had to help me. I land in Glavica, it's one o'clock in the morning at the train station. Exactly the place I wanted to be, all right? I speak zero Polish, but before they left, all my friends at the bar got me a dictionary. So I was like, okay, hotel. And I'm flipping through, thinking it's gonna be something really complicated. I'm like, oh, hotel, <laughs> great. So I end up going and, and getting a hotel, and my friends meet me the next day, and, and then things started to go. And immediately, I started to meet people. I saw, I have a friend, Agata, who's in here. Agata and her, um, her boyfriend, Marcin, were two of the first people to be very, very good to me while I was here. Um, I, the second night I was here, I got to play a concert using Marcin's guitar. Um, we're still friends since. Marcin writes songs for my band now. Um, and they're very, very good people um, to me. And one of the things that, that immediately jumped out to me was the fact that back home, I was very comfortable with what I had. I was very comfortable with meeting people because we were all speaking the same language and usually you're around people who you're, you know, you, you have common interests with and things like that. But I was 6,000 miles away from anything that looked familiar. Everything looked strange to me. Everything was different, right? After the first night of partying in Poland, I woke up with a massive hangover. I was so thirsty. I went downstairs. I went to Plus, right? Back when it was like Plus and be a drunk and all of this stuff. And I, I, I had very little money and I was like, I need water. And I went and just the first bottle of water I saw, I bought, went outside, went to drink it, spit it all out. It was Gasovana, right? <laughs> I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I am a grown ass man and I can't buy water, <laughs> right? I was so frustrated with the entire situation, right? There were moments when I went back into Brian's room right next to the train station. Now, mind you, actually, my friend gave me directions to go to some weird place. He lived right across the street from the train station, but didn't tell me, right? <laughs> So, you know, he's like, you got to go down to Vicenza, you got to turn left, you got to go to this bar, we're going to meet here. I was like, yeah, okay. But we live right across the street from the train station. One window, not facing any wind direction, was hot as hell, it was hungover, and I started to cry. All right? I did. I was like, what are you doing here, Schiffman? What are you doing? And then it came one of those moments where I had to face the fact that I wasn't in Kansas anymore, right? That... This was a decision that I made. Nobody forced me to be there, right? I did this. I did this to myself. And one of the things that changed was back in the States, I found a lot of reasons to not take responsibility for my actions, right? I didn't do it. Somebody else did, right? Oh, that wasn't me. That was those Jaeger bombs we drank, right? But here I was like, no, dude, you can't run away from this stuff. You made the decision to come here. You're here. Every decision that you make is important. So I kind of picked myself up and, you know, and met some good people who hooked me up, and I ended up getting a job. I ended up getting to teach English. Now, I had taught theater and things like that when I was in the United States, but I'd never actually really taught English before, you know? And it turned out to be a great decision. I used to ask all my students after the weekend, so what'd you do this weekend, right? Oh, well, you know, nothing, nothing normal. I went to my bobches, you know, I did this, right? But then one day I was in class and I was like, dude, what'd you do for, over the weekend? It's like, oh, it's like I, I had football practice. Like, Ma check, come on, man. This is English class. You don't say football practice, you say soccer practice. He was like, no, 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 no. Really, American football practice. I was like, say what? <laughs> you, got, you got American football here? It's like, yeah. Like, really? Yeah. There's like a league in everything. It's like, no way, right? Because I'm one of those people where I need to be involved in something. If left to my own devices, bad things happen, right? So I, I, I went and I, I, I went to a practice and I saw these guys play, right? Now, I was 27 years old at the time. I played football from the time I was in junior high school into high school and then one and a half years in college. But I hadn't played ball in like eight years, okay? You, you kind of, you know, get a little rusty. So I still, I, I threw the ball the first time. It went through this kid's hands and hit him right in the nose. He started to bleed. <laughs> These kids are like, wow, you want to play for us? <laughs> like, all right, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm 27 years old. I haven't done anything in a long time. Sure, what the hell, right? 
So we ended up playing. Um, and then unbeknownst to me, uh, one, of my, one of my truly my best friends, Art, right there, right? Um, the big guy, right? We ended, up, we ended up getting to play together. We ended up actually playing football together. Dude's a monster, okay? He's, you know, big, little tiny quarterback, highly big guy, right? But we ended up playing. And then that first year, first game, right? Yeah, I'm ready to play. Blew out my knee, right? Right in the fourth quarter. Running, 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 down, done, right? So I couldn't play anymore. What do I do, right? What do I do? These guys were very important to me, very, very special, right? So you got to fast forward real quick, two years, because I'm running out of time, right? You fast forward two years, 2009. These guys come up to me and say, Jeff, we need a coach. We know you can't play anymore, but we need a coach. And I told them, I said, if I coach you, you are not going to like me. You are not going to like what's going to happen, but you will like the outcome. Do you agree? Yeah, 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 sure. You really sure? Yeah, 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 we're really sure. Okay, first practice, squad of 50 people, right? Half of the team puking on the sideline because we ran so hard. I worked these kids, worked. We pushed and pushed and pushed. In 2009, I believe there were seven teams in the very top league, right? We were the only team in the country made up of only Polish players. You could have foreigners come from America and teams like in Wrocław, which are the dominant club right now, one of the best American football teams in all of Europe, right, is from Poland. But these guys would bring in American players, right? Guys like um, Aki Jones, who passed away um, a while ago, but played ball for the Washington Redskins. Mark Fillmore played for Northwestern, right? And I got guys who have started playing football two years ago, right, playing against guys this big who had NFL experience. Why is this important? This is all about adversity. These guys pushed and pushed and pushed and we fought and we fought. And during that season, the hardest time of my life happened. I was the closest to my grandparents. And my grandmother had passed away before and my grandpa had been really sick in 2009. And eventually I got the phone call that my grandfather had passed on a Monday. And we had a game in Warsaw on Saturday. I didn't tell my guys only told the assistant coach. And we went to Warsaw and we got our asses kicked, quite, quite handedly, actually. I told the guys on the bus afterwards that I had to go home because I had to bury my grandfather. But I've told them that you can feel for me, but what I want for you guys is I want you to stay focused. I want you to fight. I want you to work harder than you've worked before when I'm not here because we just lost this game, but we weren't out of the playoffs. So I end up coming back, and make a long story short, a team of only Polish players who had at most, at most five years of playing experience. We were the national champions in this country. We overcame every obstacle. We overcame everybody saying that we couldn't do it, that it was impossible for us to do it. It's a very popular word in Polish sometimes, it's niemożliwe. No, it's nemuzliwe, right? Absolutely not. That is a word which I, I wish they would absolutely erase from the dictionary because all it does is it limits your possibilities and it limits your possibilities to do things great. Every single one of us, and it doesn't matter if you are the most successful person or somebody who struggles at everything, every single one of us has infinite potential to be great, not just good, but to be great. Now, when I was a kid, I thought I was gonna be the starting center fielder for the New York Yankees, okay? Obviously, that's not going to happen. I was a good baseball player, but apparently I wasn't great. We all strive for greatness. We all strive for perfection. But a lot of times, the thing that stands in our way is ourselves. The greatest part about this change of coming here was that for the first time in my life, I had to really look at myself and really look. I had a chance to reinvent who I was, remembering the positive things about me, but never ever forgetting the negative things, the things that I did not want to do when I came here. This was my shot. 
I was scared to death to come here. But like they always say, every great journey begins with a single step, right? And it's very, very true. It's very, very true. Where I'm at right now, because of that decision to go, because of that decision to come here, right? I, I, I have an absolutely I, beautiful wife. I have a child, which is absolutely the joy of my life. And none of this would, I could have another wife and I could have had another baby somewhere else, but it would not be Henry and it wouldn't be Sylvia. I wouldn't be here talking to you, right? I wouldn't be a part of, of the band that I play in right now, right? Mixed of, of, of people from England and, and two Silesian guys, right? Getting to play music festivals, not only just in Poland, but in, in Czech and in, in other places as well, right? The overcoming of my fear, the fear of change, right, was, was infinitely important. And my grandfather used to say this to me, and I don't know where he got it from, so I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm stealing it from somebody or if I'm just passing it on. But one of the greatest things that my grandfather told me was that courage is not the absence of fear. It's knowing that you are afraid, but you go anyway. And the older I get, the more that I realize that that statement in itself is what keeps me going. And if you guys take anything from that speech, it's that I want you to remember that. That courage is not the absence of fear. It's knowing that you are afraid, but you go anyway. Because every single one of you is going to face that fear at some point. Either in your academic career, your personal life, your professional life. Every one of you is going to go... I don't want to get up and do this speech, right? Or I'm afraid to go here, or I'm afraid to go and do this. But all of you are courageous. You don't have to be a war hero or a, or a fireman or, or anything like this to be, to be courageous. What it, to be courageous is when you know you're afraid of something, when you know that there is a chance that it might not go the way you thought it was going to go, but you go anyway. And when you take that first step, and when you realize that you, every one of you, has infinite potential to influence positive change on the world, because the world is a scary, dark, mean place right now, full of hatred, full of distrust, and I'm, quite frankly, I'm tired of it. I refuse to live that way. I refuse to let my child grow up in a world like that. And what I'm going to do is by hopefully influencing the people that are close to me, by going out and being brave, being honorable, by doing the right thing when nobody is looking at you, having the courage to take that first step. All right? I promise you, I promise you that you will go through hell in your life. You will have moments of extreme sadness. You will go through change that is unnecessary. It's unwanted. I don't want this. But every change that you will go through has infinite possibilities. If you keep your head about you, all right? You keep your head on a swivel, right? You see what's coming from the left, from the right. If you do that and you try and you overcome the odds, when people tell you that you can't, prove them wrong. When people tell you that it's impossible, say that word does not exist in my vocabulary, right? Whenever you are afraid, remember that true courage is in you, the ability to accept the fact that you don't know what's going to happen, but you go anyway. You are the future. You are the future, and we can make this world a much better place if we are not afraid to take that first step, trust in our fellow man, help with your parents, your friends, the kindness of strangers. If you do all of these things, you change your mentality, right? I promise you, I promise you, the world will be a better place tomorrow than it is today. Thank you guys very, very much for your time. Have a fantastic weekend, all right? And thanks for coming.
Thank you.